hear him on my grandfather's shortwave with, with a built-in antenna <laughs> in Long Island, New York. All right, that's my uh, my new modern type BC348 um, power supply in operation. And this is uh, built with modern parts, okay? And it doesn't use any kind of oscillator to make the high voltage. It's, it does it the old-fashioned way. What I was able to do is to locate transformers that are still made, that are very popular, that are inexpensive, to make a power supply for the BC348. And that's what you can see down here. Okay, now I'm going to go into pause and take this out of the radio and hopefully not, not shock myself. And uh, okay, going into pause mode. Okay, hopefully the pause worked and we're back. Uh, here's, the, here's the power supply. I'm going to tell you all about it. First off, I made a panel or a plate in order to mount it, just like they did once before. Okay, I'm still using the same four-way bridge, two capacitors, 47 microfarads each, a 500 ohm 10 watt resistor. It's um, called a Pi network. Okay, now underneath, this is a new one now. This isn't the old supply tore it apart. I remade another one. All right. There's your terminals. There's only four instead of five. Uh, first one is, this is filament, and the filament and the light wire to, to operate the lights. This is minus, and this is plus, high voltage. Uh, it'd be 235 volts. Uh, this unit really wants, from a dynamo, 220 volts, 60 milliamps. And these transformers will do that. Now, the first transformer here, this transformer here provides the 24 volts AC at one amp to run the filaments. Now, you'll see people on here tell you you need three amps to run the filaments. That's incorrect. Uh, about 400 milliamps, which is less than half an amp. This provides a full amp, and there's no problem. That's all this transformer does is light the filaments, okay? And it's got plenty of amperage left over. Uh, 600 milliamps over, uh, left over, so to run cooler. Now, this transformer here is the trick. It's it's a triad. Oh, so is this. This is a triad uh, 21F84. Very common. That's why I use it. This thing, you can buy 10 of these for uh, $77, $75 on eBay, or one of them for what, like uh, about 12 bucks with shipping. Okay, sometimes less. You got to look around. But like I said, it's a triad 21F84. All right. Now, this transformer here, let's make sure we're in the frame, is a triad um, N68X. It's an isolation transformer. Uh, you can. It's got three sets of windings. It's got a, a, an output of 120 at uh, 500 milliamps. It's used for making, now I'm putting it in a rate, an old radio to make it isolated. You can also reverse uh, back feed this transformer and it's fine. It only weighs 10 milliamps, which is nothing. So you back feed it and the, the two input windings for 110 are normally in parallel. You put them in series and you get 120 volts. Okay, now you're going to say, well, how much amperage does it give? It gives us plenty, uh, over 100 milliamps. Uh, we're only using 60 for the BC348, okay? Now, you may look on the internet and you may see this kind of transformer, okay? And originally, I was backfeeding um, a Radio Shack one on this chassis, and I continue to run experiments, okay? But this is the transformer like everybody else used way, way back in the day. This is a 450 volt transformer. You'd rewire the radio for uh, six volt filaments. And uh, I wanted to leave the radio original. Okay, so if you leave the radio original, you need 24 volts to light the filaments. Whether it's 24 to 28 DC or AC, 
They're indirectly heated filaments. You can run the tubes on AC or DC to heat them. Okay. Now to run the plate voltage, you're going to need a full wave bridge, and that's what this is. There's four. There's four diodes in this. This is a full wave bridge. Okay, which gives you a little bit more voltage than a full wave rectifier, which uses two diodes. This uses four. Uh, two 47 microfarad capacitors with a, uh, a 500 uh, ohm between it um, 10 and 10 watt very common this is very common the whole trick of this whole thing the whole reason for this video is to tell you about this transformer all right and once, once again it's a triad N68X all right it's for isolation but you can make high voltage with it and it's fairly inexpensive and it's easy to locate okay and this whole project uh, I suffered through it because I had to build it all a second time I didn't um, I didn't cannibalize my other power supply so I now have two uh, two power supplies uh, that drop into a BC3348 uh, I also have a dynamotor and another external power supply see what the people are doing is they're mixing the the amperage for a dynamotor power supply with the other ones you see what it is is people don't understand current they understand voltage a little bit but current less so the reason I found this transformer where there were people hoping to work it backwards back feeding it getting enough voltage to run uh, a stereo amplifier and they're going but I'll get 300 volts and they're people are trying to explain them you can get voltage but you also need current and they People can't wrap their hands around current, even if you show them a little uh, one and a half volt battery at a fatter one. You know, you show them a, a AAA at one and a half volts, and you show them a D battery, and you say to them one provides more voltage, uh, more current over a longer period of time, and they just look at you like you're effing crazy. Uh, years ago, I had a kid in the neighborhood, and he bought himself a nine volt power supply adapter that plugged in a cigarette lighter. And he plugged it in his father's car and it went on fire. And he kept saying to me, but it's nine volts, but it's nine volts. And I didn't realize, I grew up with the kid, I didn't realize how retarded his brain was. But in other words, he couldn't understand that just because you get the voltage right and the polarity right doesn't mean you got the right amount of current. Uh, the plug-in cigarette lighter uh, was, was converting 12 volts to nine using a little tiny Zener diode. And he was putting a, uh, a tape recorder into it. And he wanted to play music. Now, uh, his father uh, left the family. He didn't live in the same house. He figured that the son would want to ride with the father to where they were going and at least talk to the father. But he didn't. He wanted to play his music. And uh, that's very common these days. The, the kid will drive with the father and have his phone on. But anyway, I tried to explain him current and current, you know, the amount of current you need. And he, he, could, he couldn't wrap his head around it. And there are a lot of people that can't. But that's how I found this transformer was I just happened to put in the word backfeeding, reverse transformer, different search terms. And all of a sudden I found this transformer and I'm like, you know what, let me see what it says. And I said, you know what, let me buy one. So I, I first thing I did was I put uh, 110 into this on the output, all right, which is one, 120. The output winding of this transformer, because it's an isolation, is 120. So I put that in there and I measured the current. It was drawing 10 milliamps. I'm like, we got it. And then I went reading about it. Other people were back feeding this. Uh, the output winding, they put the, the one, 120 in. And on the output, or on the, imp, the input windings, then become, uh, you put two in parallel, you get 110 or 120. And then you put two, in, two of them in series because you can, because there's two windings. You got to get the phasing right. And then you get yourself up uh, 220. And then you can go into a rectifier. And, and you get up to about 300 volts. And uh, in this case, as you, you load it up, because it's a it's a Pi network, uh, this thing is uh, 235 volts, okay? Like I said, the original Dynamotor is 220 at 60 milliamps. I hope I got all these numbers right, because I'm dyslexic. I have to keep all this stuff in my head. But I want to tell you, I stuck with this thing. I wanted a power supply in my BC348 that I could move around and do experiments, and I got it. Okay, and I have that old style transformer, you know, but nowadays you can't find that stuff. I happen to buy a bunch of uh, command radios and two transformers were actually 
bodged into radios. They screwed it up. It, the radio never worked. But I got myself two old transformers. Now, I told you years ago I used to take these things apart just to get the copper wire. All right. Now these things are getting real expensive. But by using these two modern transformers, you can make yourself a, uh, a power supply for BC348 that'll drop in there. And like I said, I showed you it in there. I went into pause mode, took it out. I've taken this power supply in and out of that radio so many times, I'm becoming delirious. And I just wanted to do this power, you know, uh, video. I know cat videos do much better than me. Uh, Mama cat talks to baby kittens. Five million views. Man builds a modern power supply for BC348. 50 views in a month. I think that's it. All right, that's it.